season three just ended and well i mean let's be real what is there to even say to be honest this is shameful truly and utterly shameful yet again from disney star wars while for the some of you that might have seen my content before you're well versed in knowing that i truly do not shy away from slander no matter what it is to be honest i love it i relish in it like bane and darkness but for the majority of you that aren't as well versed I'm not a slander type or just a hating type of guy just for the sole sake of hating, which I understand is a pretty prominent thing here on YouTube. There's levels to it. There's reasons. There must always be justification. It's about what's fair! And while The Mandalorian Season 3 isn't so bad in the sense that it's basically unwatchable like most people have been preaching, even with some of the most grade school writing ever to be put to a big budget TV show, and a puppet as the face of it all. For me personally, it's honestly something even worse. It's disappointing. Hence, the truly shameful aspect of it all. The Mandalorian Season 3 picks up immediately after the ending of Season 2. Oh right, actually, no it doesn't. It picks up after the ending of a completely different show. And in reality, I might as well just get this out of the way right now. This definitely isn't going to be your traditional type of review video that I usually give out. Yes, obviously, I'm going to give that brief, brief recap, but that's not even because it's fun or necessary to even remember certain aspects of the show this season. It's truly just here to provide backup to my arguments in this video that I'm going to make because this is truly one of the most aimless, directionless, lack of focus shows that I've seen in quite a while. It's honestly insane to even think that people were paid to write this nonsense. I mean, let's be real. We all know Pedro Pascal couldn't even be bothered to show up on the set for this type of waste-your-time garbage. As I stated previously, while there are many aspects of pre-production that made Season 3 of The Mandalorian so lackluster compared to, say, the first two, the main one that we're going to focus on today is simply lack of direction. We've now seen on three different occasions what a lack of studio direction can do for even the most well-known and beloved franchises. And that's not even taking into account Disney Star Wars, because that's truly so easy of an example at this point that I feel like it's basically cheating. But with Warner Brothers at the beginning of the DCEU, to Marvel Phase 4 to the Jurassic World trilogy, without having to go into extreme and excruciating details, about the specific failures of all of those examples. The point goes without saying, without a true direction, without a true goal, there will simply be no investment from the audience. Even for some of the most basic franchises that have hit our cinemas like the John Wick franchise, with the goal, with the direction, even something as simple as getting revenge on the man that killed your dog and stole your car, there will be fan investment. Now let's talk about The Mandalorian Season 3. As mentioned previously, this is not a direct sequel to The Mandalorian Season 2, much like how Doctor Strange Mom isn't a direct sequel to the first Doctor Strange. And while it's pretty understandable since the success of the previous phases of the MCU, why a connected universe is the hot wave and a successful formula on paper if done right, this is not one of those moments. In order to completely understand what's going on here, you're going to have to watch the last couple episodes of The Boba Fett Show, a show that, like the title suggests, is a show following the beloved and fan-favorite character of Boba Fett, or at least the desolate shell of the character Boba Fett used to be. But that's not even the point. The back half of the show is truly the sequel to The Mandalorian Season 2, following the events of Luke Skywalker saving Din and the other Mandalorians, while also taking Grogu away to train him in the use of the Force and to become a Jedi. A solid ending for our two main leads of Din and his puppet, and setting up some interesting directions that those two characters will now be able to walk on, as well as setting up some more personable and interesting character dynamics with the other characters introduced in Season 2, like Ahsoka, Bo-Katan, and Luke. And while the saying goes, oh well, you know, maybe in a perfect world, a phrase like that doesn't even work in a situation like this because this is just truly brain-dead writing and direction. What we have is a studio basically forcing you to watch a couple episodes of a show that was inherently bad and in typical Disney Star Wars fashion, a show that yet again was a show designed around character assassination 
of a fan favorite character from the original. And if you don't, then I guess it's just tough cookies for you, and you'll have no idea what's going on at the start of Season 3, which is just a terrible and lazy way to just keep the status quo of your brain dead and quote-unquote best Disney Star Wars show. Which is unfortunate, because that was a title that could have surely gone to the first two seasons of The Mandalorian, so I don't understand why we would just mess that up. But I actually do know why, and I'm gonna tell you. The fact that Star Wars... Yes, Star Wars, a franchise that has stood the test of time, a franchise that has been built upon generations and generations of fans, a franchise that has spawned some of the best characters and some could argue the most iconic character or villain to ever be introduced to cinema as a whole, a franchise that was acquired for billions and billions of dollars by one of the most powerful studios in the industry has been reduced to absolute rubble. To a point where a green puppet that doesn't speak any words, a green puppet that is impossible to write any character development for, a green puppet where us the audience basically knows the bare minimum for who the hell this character even is, is now the face. Yes, you heard me correctly. The face. The poster boy of that once said and glorious and world-renowned franchise. No. 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 No, no, no. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. I mean, what an absolute shame. We are truly in the gutter at this point. I feel like this is the time of the video where I should probably dive into what actually happened during the entirety of Mando Season 3, but I mean, what did happen? Nothing of significance, I can tell you that, but I'll simply try to do my best. The show follows Din and Grogu immediately after helping Boba Fett do... I guess whatever he needed to do. I truly don't even remember that show. Why would I? But with then basically an excommunicado status from the Mandalorian crew because of the removal of his helmet in the finale of season two. And with that problem pretty much being solved at the ending of episode one, we basically just move our way through filler after filler episode with the end goal of Bo-Katan wanting to retake the planet of Mandalore. A goal that should be, well, relatively interesting, but it's not. There's no struggles, no obstacles, no hard choices that our characters have to make throughout around 90% of the show until our main man, Giancarlo Exposito, shows up and even an actor with the pedigree and integrity such as himself couldn't save this aimless and nonsensical season of dog water. And the worst part is, I'm not even withholding any information just to prove my point. Nothing happens. Nothing of significance, at least in the first six episodes of an eight-episode season. And when even getting into what happened in the last couple episodes that the show couldn't even be bothered fleshing out with, our main villain is again, as I said, John Carlo Exposito as Moff Gideon. Like, what an absolute joke. I say that because bringing his character back, you again, with your lazy writing, write yourself into a hole of, do you now just kill this character and move on in some type of unceremonial way? Or do you just continue to reap the same problems over and over and over again by bringing back this character, basically admitting to me, the fan, that our protagonists are complete incompetent morons that pretty much waste their time at every opportunity that they can get, while Moff Gideon actually does things that improves his character and his goals, but off-screen, of course, can't show anything good here with actual death and significance, but we definitely have time to show Jack Black being a total fucking goof and Lizzo cheating at some kind of alien frisbee goal. <laughs> or even showing Den being an absolute brain dead fart to droids and introducing the fact that now in canon, yes, canon, that droids have actual lives like they're humans. I'm pretty sure you're now starting to understand the picture that I'm painting here. But the worst of it all, the true catalyst for why this season was so absolutely boring and a waste of time, 
were the characters of Din and Grogu. As mentioned before, these were the characters that made this show work. It makes sense. They were our main leads, and that's why I agreed that the first two seasons were easily the best Disney Star Wars that Disney Star Wars had to offer me in this brain-dead era of their products. But now with the absolute lack of direction and decision to continue their story in a show that wasn't their own, it pretty much makes the two earlier seasons obsolete, as if they didn't even happen at all. When you really dive into it, Den and Grogu are literally the same exact characters that we met in episode 1 of The Mando Show. Have there been emotional moments? Yes, for sure. Have there been moments showcasing the illusion of character development and growth? Yep, 100%. And did any of that matter once the first episode of season 3 started? No. No, it didn't. If you didn't know any better, you could watch this as season 1 to a character like Den and Grogu, and you wouldn't be affected in your enjoyability to watch in the slightest. I like Bo-Katan, truly. She is one of my favorite characters in all of Star Wars. I am a huge fan. And while some people are having a much more extreme reaction to the blatant sidelining of Den's character and favorite of Bo-Katan, for me, it just furthers my point of Den and Grogu being bland, vanilla characters. It's a rather obvious move to transition the POV of your show or your movie to follow the most interesting character because, well, it's self-explanatory. But in doing so, it truly showcases the characters that are a waste of time to the overall narrative, which is what Den and Grogu are. And it didn't have to be that way. That's the problem. If the show actually kicked off following the events of Season 2 with, say, Den not having Grogu, it wouldn't have affected the simple-ass progression of the show whatsoever. But as mentioned previously, the laziness is overflowing when it comes to the writing room. Having Grogu be in the show as a character that only provides plot armor and some of the most extreme contrivances when it comes to what Disney Star Wars would probably categorize as stakes. Leaving Din in a void-like sunken place when it comes to character development and growth as a whole. And while honestly this is the first time in a while where I feel like I could rant about this season for days on end, imagine another Disney Star Wars product. Yes. <laughs> I have to reiterate that I don't inherently think that this is a bad season. It's just disappointing and that's the most shameful aspect of it all. Because the worst part is that this is my reality. Compared to what the finale trailer told me, this is some of the best Disney Star Wars actually has to offer me. And even though they have that in mind, this vanilla-ass show is the best that they could come up with. Which is insane, because fans could have come up with something much, much better in a matter of a couple hours. So thank you yet again, Disney Star Wars. For having another disappointing entry to the multitude of failures that I've had to ingest over the years. I guess I'll be seeing you in season four. Man, it's crazy because I had to take a sip of water after that. Man, I hate Disney Star Wars. They're, they're just so terrible. Thank you guys for watching the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. It's hard because I have wanted to make this channel more diverse and in most regards, I feel like I am. But these Star Wars videos have been starting to rack up lately, so I'm going to need them to relax on their shit. Check out my The Last of Us video from last week. It's a much better show with much better characters. As always, I'll have a short review and rating of all the Mandalorian seasons on my channel. I just wanted season 3 to end before I release them, so feel free to go check those out as well. I know that Star Wars is still a very divisive topic which is truly so weird because i actually don't understand how anyone could not feel disrespected while watching this garbage with that being said make sure you comment down below how you felt about mando season three because i mean for what i just stated i would love to hear some of those reasons but with that that's all the words i got for you today bye